Okay, for the last part of 9.1, I want to talk about the graphs of the logarithmic equations. Kind of already showed you that at the beginning of 9.1. But take a look at our parent functions. We've still got our H's and our K's, and of course we have our A here. Um, for us, though, our H's and K's are going to affect our, um, our H is going to affect our range or our domain. Just, and we'll talk about that here in a second. We'll get more into that. But the easiest way, because a logarithmic function is the inverse of an exponential function, you must graph the corresponding exponential function first and then take its inverse. That's the easiest way to do this. So in order to graph this function, y equals log base 2 of x, you know, 2 to the y equals x is what that's saying. But I want to switch it. I want to um, graph its corresponding exponential function first. So I want to graph y equals 2 to the x first and then switch those values back. And that's how I will get a better logarithmic picture. So let's take a look at this next page. Um, actually, I noticed earlier that this this graph here, this log graph, isn't technically completely correct. So if you had made a table of this, this would not have been completely correct. But I want to talk about our asymptotes, and then we'll get to graphing in our example. Notice our asymptotes of the exponential function. So this being our exponential function, we know that it is approaching zero. But do not just say our asymptote is zero. Our asymptote is the equation of this line right here. And what is the equation of this line? This is the equation y equals zero. y equals zero. So the asymptote is y equals zero. Now if I had had a k value, and I had shifted this exponential function, then it would be shifted down, and it would have had a new asymptote, say maybe y equals negative 4 or such. So on our exponential functions, our k value, which shifts it up and down, affects our asymptote. Okay, but now let's take a look at the logarithmic graph. <coughs> so for our logarithmic graph, let's take a look at how we get that asymptote. So our logarithmic one being this one here. And where is that asymptote? It is going to be this line here. So our logarithm is going to approach the, func the equation of the line x equals 0. This is the y-axis, but it's x equals 0 because x's value is 0 everywhere along here. And so shifting this logarithm up and down doesn't do anything to the asymptote. Shifting it up and down doesn't do anything to the asymptote. Shifting it which way does something to the asymptote. Shifting it left and right does something to the asymptote and would change that. So that would be changing it to x equals negative 2 in that case. So therefore, h values, shifting it left and right, affect the asymptote. Okay, so now let's actually graph this thing here. We've got y, gr I want to graph y equals log base 3 of x. So that's saying 3 to what power equals x? Okay, so that's going to be hard if I say 3 to what power equals negative 2. Now that's what that's saying here. 3 to what power equals negative 2? I don't know. You know, maybe you could figure that out. Therefore, the technique is to graph the corresponding 
or make a table of the corresponding exponential. The corresponding exponential is this. So I'm going to make myself a quick little table here. So 3 to the negative 2 is 1 9. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So <coughs> I'm going to come over here and I'm going to switch my x and the y values. And I'm not going to mess with that table that I had started over there. I switch this x and y values. And that's saying if x is 1 ninth, then y is negative 2. I'm switching these values here. If x is 1 third, then y is negative 1. Switching these values here. If x is 1, then y is 0. If x is 3, then y is 1. If x is 9, then y is 2. That now is a table I can graph and I can understand. So I'm going to do that. 1 ninth, negative 2. 1 third, negative 1. 1 zero. 3 1. The other one doesn't fit on there. But there's my basic logarithmic function for log base 3 of x. So what domain does that have? What are the x values of that function? Well, I can tell that it's approaching 0, but it's never going to reach it, so it's 0 to infinity. The range is going down forever in this direction and up forever in this direction, so it's negative infinity to infinity. Now, it's worth noting that these domain and range values were switched and flipped of course, whenever we had our exponential functions. Remember, when we did our exponential functions, all of our domains were negative infinity to infinity, and you kept saying, do I have to write this over and over and over and over and over again? The domains were negative infinity to infinity, but now the ranges are negative infinity to infinity since they're inverses. And the value of this asymptote, as we talked about before, x equals 0. Now what I want you to do is take those points that you plotted here, shift them around. This function is a k value, so that's going to say, take these points from before and shift them up 1. So that's going to take them here. So let's see what that did. Did it change our domain? No. Did it change our range? It is still negative infinity to infinity and our asymptote did not change. Our asymptote it's still approaching x equals 0. So a k value did not change the domain range or asymptote. The k value did not change it. It just shifted it up. K but I have to move it up just a tad to do this one here. This, being in parentheses here, is our h value. And since it's the opposite of what we see, our h value is negative 1. So we are shifting it left 1. So all of our points should be left 1. And that would make them there. <coughs> so my graph is approaching negative 1 for the domain. Range is still negative infinity to infinity, but my h value changed my asymptote, which is x equals negative 1. So there you go. There's your graphing, how you handle those asymptotes of logarithmic equations.